Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today, it's back into Decisive Campaigns, our Denton's Offensive. This is our Let's Play tutorial. This is episode number two. Now, last time, we went around and just really talked about everything you see here on the screen, what it means, uh, what it can show you. Uh, this time we're going to get out on the map. Now, as I always do when I, I do these, as people in the comments give me good comments and say, hey, you got something wrong or you need to clarify this or that, I like to go back and correct anything that I said that was incorrect. Uh, and let's just click on a headquarters unit here. Okay, here's the 559th uh, Volks. And I said that over here, of course, you can see the hex they're in and all the hex stats if you want. You can see the unit that's in here, unit detail with the supply and whatnot. You can also see who, everybody that is in the unit. And then we talked about the officer. We were talking about these officer cards and command points. So you have two different sets of cards. Well, that, that's not even true. you got a bunch of different sets of cards, but you've got general cards that are up here, and then you've got cards with your generals. Okay, that, that, that maybe didn't clear anything up. The basic idea is each commander has his own cards. You also then have some general cards. But I had said last episode, these command points, and you know they've got good tool tips here, command points 10. Well, this tells you how many command points it takes to play the card. I had said these don't really build up. They're not, not true. That is what this is. Do you see the plus sign here? And so every turn, he's going to get two command points. So that'll let you know, you know, you've got attack here 12. We've got 10 now. If we don't play any this turn, we'll get two more for the next turn. We'll have 12. We can play the attack card. So I just wanted to clear that up because uh, I actually got that wrong when we went over this last time. I said that they didn't build up command points. They actually do, and he's getting two per turn okay uh great let's get down on the map and see what's going on all right i'm going to start all the way over here to the left we've got the 1125th regiment now this is just part of it because if we zoom in you can see the other parts of the 1125th now you can combine troops you can uh, split troops you can also transfer troops uh back and forth between different counters on the map Maybe we'll get into that. Maybe that'll be saved for the grand campaign. But you can do those things. And they're all, you know, fairly simple to do. I think that his system is really refined down at this point to where uh, it's fairly easy to figure out if you want to do something. Now, what are we seeing here with the unit? Well, you see the counter over here. Okay. We see the name of the unit, the headquarters of the unit, the 559th. And remember, when it comes to command, when we click on this command, within five hexes, this is going to give 100% of its command bonus, okay? Out to 10 hexes, it gives 75% of the command bonus. Now, I like this system even better than the Grigsby system. The Grigsby system, you kind of have to be within five hexes of the core headquarters. Now, this is not a core uh, but you get the idea. This is a division, but the same idea. You would have to be within five of that. This has it kind of melt away as you go further away from the headquarters. So five is 100 percent, 10 is 75 percent, 15 is 50 percent and out to 20. So you get bonus up to 20 away. OK, well, he's way out here, but we're probably going to move our commander at some point. What else do we see here? We see how many movement points he has, or action points. Sorry, I should say action, because you also have to spin them to attack. Uh, so it's action necessary for movement and combat. You have 100. You can see that is also on the counter here. Now, it shows as 9, but think of this as you know, really being 10, 99. They just didn't put a 10 on any of these. Uh, and so that's your action points. This is headquarter power, and this is exactly what I was just talking about. You can see 75 here. That's because he's more than five hexes away, but he's within 10 hexes. So he gets 75% of the combat bonus that this guy gives. What is that combat bonus? 61%. So he gets a 61% bonus, but he's only going to get 75% of that. Uh, what is that? About 43% on the combat bonus. Uh, if you go 61 times 75 uh, for percentages. 
Then what do we have next? Supply consumption. Um, you want this to always be at 100. That means they're in supply. As it goes down, then what do you have? Supply attack modifier. So if your consumption is under 100% because you've got a bad supply situation, uh, the supply you can't trace a direct uh, path to it or you're too far away from a supply source, again, out of the scope here. But the basic idea is if this is less than 100, you will start to take penalties when you attack. And that's what this is, the supply attack modifier. Then you have the supply defensive modifier, base, same basic idea, right? Uh, this is just uh, your penalty when you're on the defense. Then you have integrity. Well, integrity is really, you know, the TOE of this. Uh, you know, how much of the recommended amount of a men and equipment do you have? 67, it tells you here if it goes below 20%, the unit could break. Okay, we've talked about vigor. That is what this uh, lightning bolts for vigor. Wow, okay. Uh, vigor is just the maximum readiness you could possibly have. And so, you know, this could go down and then no matter, you know, how long you rest the unit, no matter what you do with the unit, the readiness can never go above that. And right next to this is the readiness. So two big, big uh, determinants of how well this unit's going to fight is its integrity and its readiness, right? You want 100%, but every time you move, you're going to lose some readiness. Uh, they're marching about, they get tired, etc. They're going to lose some of their readiness. Then we have experience. I think that kind of goes without uh, too much uh, definition for me, you understand what experience is. The more they battle, the more they do things, they're going to get more experience, the better they'll be. It's a big algorithm, right? And every one of these things adds to it either bonuses or uh, penalties. Then you have morale. Again, in every game, morale is incredibly important. Um, then you have entrenchment. So our entrenchment's 148 right now. Uh, you know, I haven't played the game enough to say, oh, that's good, that's bad. Uh, you know, the higher this is, the better you're going to be on the defense. I, I, okay, I mean, I think you probably just know that intuitively, uh, that the higher this is, the better you're going to do. Now, every time a unit sits in a hex, it's going to build up entrenchment. You know, some people think of entrenchment like you're actually, uh, you know, digging this huge fort or something. It doesn't have to be that. It could be sandbags that the guys are setting up, ditches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but they build as they sit in a hex. Now, different types of un or different troop types build entrenchment faster or slower. Uh, infantry is going to build it faster than armor, right? Uh, engineers, and we do have engineers out here, we'll talk about them. Oh, by the way, I put on the silhouettes just so you can see the silhouette counters. But engineers, and if we go to preferences, and we go to units, we go to NATO counters, where are engineers? We've got some out here, I'm telling you. Oops, there we go. Um, and it'll be with the M symbol, right? What looks like an M symbol. I know we've got some around here. Of course, I said that. I, I didn't remember exactly. Oh, they're in this hex. Uh, and let's cycle through. Stack and mini. There's some engineers. Uh, and you can see here, pioneers. That's what the Germans called them. Um, they will build entrenchment faster than regular infantry. So just something to keep in mind. Um, okay, so that's entrenchment. And then you see this, I'm glad we got over to the engineers. These are engineering points, all right? And it'll explain to you uh, what you can use engineering points for. In this game, mainly they're used for either building up entrenchment faster or bridges, all right? You can blow bridges or you can repair bridges. And you can see the definition here or the um, points needed to do those different tasks. So a bridge over an extra large river can be repaired for 400, a major river, 300, so on and so forth. You can see that just as well as I can. Um, but you can also blow them. So if we look here and we go to unit, uh, up here, blow, repair okay so blow and repair 
uh, when it comes to bridges. Now, in this scenario, all of the bridges, I believe, are intact when I was looking at the map earlier. So we're not really going to have to worry about this. We will have to worry about that, of course, in the main campaign. But these build every time you're going to get more engineering points. And, the, of course, the more engineers you have, the more engineering points you get. Now, what's this up here? Well, this kind of reminds me of those Asiad, Asiad games uh, where you give units kind of some basic, simple commands. Now, this here is how they move. And you can also see that if we go back to the silhouette counters, you can see their primary movement method. Now, this doesn't have anything. So that's by foot. They march, right? But if you go down, okay, here's like artillery here. You see the horse. They get moved by horses. For the motorized divisions, you can see they move by half track or truck, right? And it's right there on the counter. And so for these units, you're going to have to pay attention to your fuel. Now, fuel and supply work very much the same way. Uh, although you could, you know, potentially, they're, they're separated out, right? So we saw those cards where you can build up your fuel or build up your supply. But for anything that's being moved by truck or half track, you got to kind of pay attention. The horses get fed, uh, I assume, if you have supply. I, I don't really know that, but uh, hopefully the horses are okay. Um, you can also move this infantry. Let's take this infantry. You could move it by truck if you wanted to. And uh, we're not going to go that deep into that. I, I don't think we're going to need it for this in the grand campaign. We'll talk more about it. But it's based on the weight, right? The manpower weight, foot total, uh, 452. You would have to get enough trucks to, uh, you know, to put these guys on trucks. So anyway, but you can you know, I guess we would call it motorize them in a Grigsby game, uh, but you can motorize these troops if you have trucks in the area. We even have a card, I believe, uh, repair trucks column. Okay, so you can put some things on trucks. Uh, right, out of that. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk, oh, okay, that I was down here, sorry. So you see here, the unit is currently in combat mode. All right, this unit normally moves as foot. Click to switch to march mode. It costs you 25 AP. All right, so we could click this, go to march mode, switch to march mode. It costs you 25 AP. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to waste our points right now. I doubt, I don't think in a small scenario like this it probably makes sense. But the basic idea is there are two different modes of travel. Even either combat mode, okay, or march mode. In combat mode, it's going to cost you more points to move through a hex, more AP to move. When you're in march mode, and especially if you're on a road, it's going to cost less. So you pay the upfront cost of 25 AP to throw these things into march mode. And you can do it with any of these. If we come over here to the artillery, we could click them over to being pulled by the horse. And again, it says switch to march mode. All right. It costs you 25 AP up front, but then they'll move much faster after that because they're in march mode. But beware, like other games where this is a mechanic, they will take a lot more damage if they're attacked when they're in march mode, right? So if you're near the enemy, you want to keep this in combat mode. So every unit, uh, every counter out here that you see has these two different movement modes. Uh, combat, it moves as tracked. Click to switch to march mode, all right? So when you need to move something somewhere fast or if something's way back in the back <clears throat> and you want to get it to the front, you click it over to march mode, put it on a road, and get it up there. Now, what's the next thing? They uh, He added in this game, and I'm so glad he did, what's called intercept fire. And if you've ever played a John Tiller game, you'll know this basic concept. But one of the weaknesses of an I go, you go style of game is that you can move all over the place and you never get fired at uh, in some games. You know, you can move right up next to the enemy. You can move past the enemy. You can go all around and you don't really suffer for it. Um, 
and it's very unrealistic, right? It's one of the reasons I really like Wii Go games, where everything is uh, resolved at one time in a combat resolution. Uh, but in this game, he's added intercept fire. And what does this mean? It means if I move this unit here, the Americans get a chance to fire at me, right? Even though it's my turn, they can fire at me in what's called intercept. I kind of think of it as defensive fire because I've played so many tiller games and I think it's called de defensive fire there. But this is intercept fire, regular, okay? That means that essentially this group, I want to stop saying essentially. I noticed last, last video I said essentially like 10 times. Uh, basically, okay, that's close enough. This uh, is going to, you're going to tell your troops how much you want them to unload if they do this intercept fire. So let's just say we wanted to sit here and the Americans moved out here. If they're within our range, the AI is going to decide, are we going to shoot at them? Um, most of the time in this game, it seems they will uh, do intercept fire, but you're going to tell how much intercept fire to do. Trigger happy, never conservative, regular. I think all of these units start on regular, and then you've got to decide, do you want to bump that up? Or if you're low, uh, you know, if you don't, or maybe maybe you're in hiding. Maybe you want to let that unit go by you because you know there's a big tank unit coming in next, and you want to spring a trap or something. You could put this down to never, or conservative, or whatnot. Um, and so, this is your intercept fire for this scenario. We'll probably just keep this on regular and something, unless something pops up where I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll put it on trigger happy and just let this guy go like it's apocalypse now. Uh, okay, and then the final one is retreat mode. And this means the regular, this again is like an Asiad game where you're telling, a, you're giving a basic order to this counter of when to retreat. In normal or regular, what they call regular, after 50% losses, this unit will jump back a hex and say, we're out of here, guys. You can also do this as flexible. So after 25% losses, they'll, they'll move back. So let's just say you send a recon unit out and you're like, I don't want this thing to get just shredded. At 25% losses, it will retreat. Uh, this is flight to, or <laughs> flight uh, we're talking retreat uh, fight until the last man so if you're you set up a bunker and you're saying we've got to hold air accords or whatever you can have them fight to the last man stubborn 75 percent regular i think we'll just keep this on regular for now unless we put out a recon unit or something and maybe we'll click that down to 25 percent finally what is out here this tells you every uh, individual element of this counter. What's in this thing? So you see it adds up to 15 for our, you know, raw combat value. But, you know, what's in here? Well, we've got some Vespies here, six of them, six times. So it tells you 24. It tells you how many of them there are. It tells you, it gives you a really nice, I really like this. It gives you a really nice rundown of what this unit did historically, when it was built, what it was used for, uh, etc. And I, I really like this. I wish more games had this. It really helps you learn uh, some of the historical uh, elements that were out on the battlefield. It gives you an idea. It's just a nice flavor of what. And also, if you just have no idea what the thing is, it can tell you what it was used for, and you can kind of get a, get an idea of what you should use it for. It tells you, you know, action points, attack, startup, penalty, blood, God, so on and so forth. We're not going to go through all of this, um, but it tells you every individual stat for this individual element. Okay. Now, what's over here? We have defense, okay, what it's going to do on the defense. We have hard attack and hard defense. And if you've ever played a war game before, this is the differentiation between men and machine, right? So hard attack, hard defense are machines uh, that it tries to attack or shoot at. As you can see, on the offense, it would do 10 damage. On the defense, 20 damage to a hard target. 
Over here, it gives you soft attack and soft defense. Those are humans. So if it's shooting at, a, at uh, something with flesh, uh, it's good. So you can see, just looking at here, it'll give you kind of an idea of what you would want to use this for. It's really good on attack against infantry right a 55 and also on the defense a 40 against harder targets not quite as much uh 10 and 20 okay and then you see naval attack well i don't think anything is going to be floating down the river here but you never know maybe we'll get a uh, ironclad uh that's out here then this tells you your range and so if this has artillery capability it can bombard troops whatnot this will tell you up to how many hex is very important to know what this is obviously so the range here is eight it's got a nice big range let's uh, i guess we could have compared but let's go over here to our armor all right and oh that's what i was on my goodness let's go to our tanks here we have 25 panthers click on that you can see how much hard damage they do 245 on the attack 184 on the defense 53 soft attack 39 soft defense this is how good they are uh, on the defense in general and then this is their range up to three hexes all right so you know this has got a little range to it we probably don't need to put it right up at the front Maybe have the infantry go find out what's up in front of us, and then we can do a ranged, a little more of a ranged attack. Now, obviously, uh, you're probably going to do more damage the closer you are to the units, uh, but that all goes into the algorithm. Okay, what else do we have out here? We've got three trucks. Uh, this is a half, well, this is not, a, well, it is a truck, but it's a half track, standard German Opel Blitz truck. It'll tell you all about that, so we could load some troops on here if we wanted to. Uh, and if we're on this, you can see, oh, because this has trucks, this is how you load troops on trucks. Click to attach units onto this regiment. So you don't do it on the individual or the group of trucks. You do it to the regiment itself, maximum weight carry, carry manpower carry, so on and so forth and we don't you have to be in the hex with the units you want to carry we don't have anything that's eligible to be carried here but if we did you could see other units down here you'd click on it that would go up to attached units and they would load onto the half tracks we've also got 10 kind of basic infantry that goes along with them the core foundation of most units you can see on the defense uh, you can see soft attack soft defense hard attack hard defense okay uh, same idea, uh, but you know every unit's going to have some men in here, and then we have the 37. Uh, this is the 37 millimeter flak. Yeah, 37 millimeter AA flak. So anti-aircraft, right? And you can see light flak. This has got a flak score, heavy flak uh, here. You can see those scores that also go into you know the algorithm. It's got a range of one, so with the anti-aircraft, and I've noticed that if I, as I flipped around the map, and we could just go to kind of a dedicated anti-aircraft unit, which is this, and you can really see it if we go to the NATO counters. There we go. Anti-aircraft, right? We've got anti-aircraft here. He's right next to the headquarters, and if we click on that, uh, you can see what do we have here. We've got a half track again. Uh, this was, no, it's fully tracked. Shouldn't call it a half track. It's fully tracked. Uh, it's got that, you know, tank looking track here. It's fully tracked light tractor used by the Wehrmacht to solve the poor performance of wheeled and half tracked in the mud and the snow on the Russian front. Nearly 24,000 were built. Uh, they're very slow, but they tow guns. Okay. Um, and if you look at this, it, what is it towing? Well, it's towing these 10, 20 millimeter flax. And if we look at them, you can see here range one and almost all flak that I've seen, at least in this scenario, has a range of one. So you're going to want to keep them really close to. And usually I would just stack this with the headquarters, right? Um, and then we've got another one over here. Do we have any in the south? Yep, we've got one by the headquarters. Yeah, of course, we've got to have those guys protected, right? Uh, get the headquarters, the generals protected from air uh, power uh, because there is, you know, air bombing. Um, 
that would factor into the game here. So anyway, uh, I'm going to pause here for a second, get a drink. When I come back, we're going to start actually moving units. I think we've talked about everything we need to talk about. We're going to start moving units and see. All right, I'm back, and let's get down to some action. I'm ready to play the game. You're probably ready to see the game played. Uh, and so we'll continue to talk about different concepts as we go along here. But just looking at the big strategic situation, what are we trying to do? Well, it's called Aracourt for a reason. You want to push to Aracourt. Uh, but what's the best way to go about that? Well, if we're just looking at the map, we've got the 559th up here, right? They don't seem to have a ton of resistance. And if you look here, this is a plain. And then it gets up into a little more mountainous region. If we look over here at Hex, we've got, uh, let's go down to the Hex stats. We've got a height level of one. So this is a height level zero, right? This is the plain down to the river um, or the valley into the river. So that's a zero. That's a one. This is a two. So all of these, you know, again, it's not uh, not the best, I don't think, representation here. But you can see this gets up to a level 2 height here, level 1 height here. We at least want to get up on this uh, plateau sort of area here or maybe even up on top of the hill for our artillery. Uh, so I think we definitely want to push here. Uh, 11th Panzer. Um, I don't know. I mean, we see the Americans here. We see the roadways that go all the way up here to Javelis. Uh, I think that we probably want to go into town here. And, you know, this is flat area. You can see this is flat. Uh, we get up to a height one, a height two. You know, so again, you're looking at these elevations. Uh, we don't want to be going straight uphill with our tanks. We probably want to go into town, come down the road, and go this way. I think the plan here is going to be to take the 559th, push down these dirt roads around this way, down the dirt roads here with the 559th, 11th Panzer into town. We maybe want to loop around here a little bit with part of this. Now, we will potentially be taking fire as we do that. Uh, but I think that'll be the plan, is we'll do that in the north. And then in the south, what have we got going on? Well, we've got these two panzer brigades out here. Looks like the Americans have, you know, a fair amount of strength. But I think... So I think here in the south, maybe we kind of sit still a little bit, at least on turn one, allow ourselves to expand out here, and that may cause the Americans to have to drop back. You know, they're going to want to defend Aracourt, which is where all these roads, all roads lead to Aracourt. So uh, we may see them drop back, or maybe not. But, you know, if they have to stay out here and hold our troops here, we may get further down the road in the north. So I think we're going to start in the north. Now, one thing I want to point out is when it comes to hexes or artillery, uh, you know, we've got units like the one we just brought on the map. Now, this has zero action points because we just put this on the map. But if we look at this and we look at the guns that we have, like the 105 millimeter, uh, it's got a range of eight. Right. And so usually in war games, as uh, you know, the Soviets really did a great job of during World War Two, obviously artillery bar barrage before you start moving. Now, the problem is we're not exactly sure what all he has out here. So we could do an artillery barrage and but we may get over here one hex and say, shoot, I wish we would have saved our artillery. So I think we're going to scout a little bit first before we start firing artillery. But let's just say that we wanted to hit this cavalry uh, group here, was cavalry squadron. So the Americans have a little recon out here sitting on top of this hill. It's a height one, but it goes down into the valley here because this is a height zero to the river. So he's sitting up here on this kind of hilltop looking down, uh, probably has really nice line of sight. And that's what these eyeballs are, right? So let's look at ours, for instance. You can see green eyeballs where we have really good line of sight, blue where we have a little bit less, red we can't see at all, uh, and that's what those eyeballs represent. Okay, so let's just say we wanted to open up an artillery barrage on this cavalry squadron. How would we go about that? Well, we could go through each individual gun if we wanted to, okay? Or we can go to this hex, 
click on this, you open up the hex uh, tab, and do ranged. And when you do ranged, you can see there's the cavalry squadron, right? This will show us all units that could currently fire on it. So you see artillery here, uh, part of the 119th. Um, you see uh, some armor, but it's armor artillery. It's part of that armor brigade uh, artillery. Also, we have mortars in these units, and so they could, they're could they within range to fire their mortars. So if you definitely want to attack a certain unit uh, with artillery or start an artillery barrage before you move any units at all, go out to the hex, click on it. It will bring up what's kind of called the battle screen here. Here's your enemy forces, right? It'll tell you what's in there. Infantry, uh, assuming, you know, because of fog of war, assuming that you have good recon on them, 97 defenders, 8 guns, 19 motorized, so on and so forth. Um, and you can pick, if you just click on the left, let's just say we put the artillery in there, and hell, I don't know, this other artillery. You can put these down here, click attack, and you'll do an artillery barrage. We'll go into what all of this means, but this shows you all of the bonuses and penalties that you have a raw attack score and an adjusted attack score. So, well, I said we'd go over it in a minute. Nah, let's do it now. Light forest, you can see the penalty, negative 40. Uh, for readiness modifier for our different guns, you can see we're taking a bit of a penalty because not all of them are at peak readiness. Uh, for experience, we actually get a bonus of 25%. Indirect fire line of sight. Well, we'll talk more about line of sight, but right now we've got an indirect line of sight. Uh, so we're taking a little bit. Well, we actually get a little bonus for that. Uh, if you have a good line of sight by any unit on the target, indirect fire gets a bonus. Well, there you go. Okay, so we do have direct line of sight on this. And so our indirect, uh, any unit that has indirect line of sight is they're using the spotting of a different unit. We get a little bonus for that. Headquarters staff officer bonus, we talked about that. Cumulative modifier, so this, when you throw all this in the blender, it's 27%. The raw score is 218 offensive firepower. Then you get the modified offensive firepower. I'm just guessing if we put a bonus on 218 of 27%, that comes out to 277. Just guessing there. But we're not going to do that, okay? Um, we're not going to do an artillery barrage. Instead, we're going to start scouting out a little bit and see if there's anything else we'd like to hit with our artillery. But the first thing we're going to do is move our headquarters. Now, why are we going to do that? Let's bring up the unit here. It's the 559th headquarters that we have here. Um, we can bring up the officer. It's Kurt von Mullen. Do we want to give anybody extra recon? Well, maybe, uh, maybe one of these units up here. Let's click on one of these. We'll cycle here. We've got some pioneers. Now, what's the deal with pioneers? They can fix bridges. They can blow bridges. But then they, you know, these pioneers are off also infantry soldiers. They're just not quite as good as the other infantry you have in the game. And so let's play the recon card on them. Uh, play card. Okay. Now then. You need to select a unit, the Pioneer Battalion. You can play the card on that. We're going to play the card. Okay. And now they, I have visited and improved the recon operations, the 559th Pioneer. All right. Excellent. Let's go back to the headquarters, though. Now, I was talking about command power, and you can see the command power visually represented here. Everybody within his green is going to get 100% of the bonus uh, of his command. Out here, though, these guys way out here are only going to get 75%. So we want to move him west, right? And when I talk west, east, north, and south here, I'm just talking about this smaller map. Uh, on the campaign map, I'm not sure if it would orient exactly that way. But on this little map, uh, this is to the west. We want to move him over so everybody gets his command, uh, his maximum command bonus, I guess would be the way to put it. Now we've got to watch out because we may get some 
you know, reactive fire here, but I am going to move him forward one into this infantry hex, and when I do that, whoops, when I do that, when I do that, okay, well, I didn't do that for illustration illustrative purposes but it works out that way if you ever have that problem it's because you're on inspect and that's like locking all of your units you can't move them we got to go to move okay <laughs> and if you've got multiple units in a hex make sure you're on the right one uh you <laughs> you can't undo so make sure you're on the right one or you can move them as a group so if you've got a hex like this one and you want to move both of these, you just click on group. But as it is, we're going to be on move. We're going to move the headquarters into, into this hex. Okay, well, we're off. Let's go back to the hex stats, though, because I want to show you one other thing, uh, or a few other things when we look at the hex. Recon, 67 on this hex. Well, that doesn't tell us a whole lot. This is our own hex. Instead, let's look at this hex. We've got recon of 52, and he has got a hide value of 24. So based on terrain and elevation changes, there is a hide score. General rule of thumb, when this is over 20, plus 20, the recon is, you can see this unit uh, and get some information about it. So it has to be over 20. As you get more and more plus, you'll get more and more information about this unit, uh, but the general rule of thumb is 20. The other thing I wanted to point out about hexes here is the total stack. Right now it shows in this hex, it's a 76. Okay, what does that mean? How does that work out? Well, you can't have over 200. That's the stack. Uh, at 200 i can't remember if you just can't move in there or you actually get it or it's a penalty uh but the stacking is 200 well we're well within that but i want to move the headquarters down here into moyanovich all right what's the stack here it's 65 so we should have plenty and let's keep then making sure we're on the headquarters down there and let's also do stack and mini so we can see the two different units in this hex Let's just keep on trucking. Now you'll also see he only has 90 action points left. He started with 100. Now he's got 90. Let's move him one more. All right. We're not taking any reactive fire here. Okay. That's good. His movement points are down to 82. And as you can see on the counter now, that's only an 8. All right. Let's move him one more. Now it's down to a 7. Okay. We could have also put him... Uh, in march mode but we didn't want to do that so close to enemies so uh, or enemy units so let's keep him going he's got 74 action points and now he's moved into this town excellent uh he's still got 66 left now the first unit i want to move is the unit furthest west well as you can see it's not in command range so i'm going to keep moving the command down this road Make sure it's on the command. Okay, it is. Off he goes. He's down to 58. Now he's down to 45. And then finally, I want to put him in Vixer Sail. Sure. Uh, let's get back here. Let's move him one more. And now you can see he's got all of these units, maximum command bonus. But I'm going to be moving these guys down the road too, and they will also get in command range. Also, we're going to move these first. And so I wanted to make sure they were in command range. If you know we have some problems here, or if we want to move up this road with these units, I'll move him back over a little bit. But for now, I wanted to move the command over here, okay? Now, we've given the extra recon points to this Pioneer Battalion, so let's move them across the river and see what we've got. What else do we have here? We have anti-tank that could go with them as well. We could also, now this, you can see, is got the artillery in it, or at least the mortars, right? It's got the mortars in here. Then we have a, a straight up infantry group or regiment here. 
I want to kind of move them all as a stack. So I've given him the extra recon. Now we just can't go over 200. What's the stack on just this unit? It's 49. What do we have in this hex? 65. Okay, so we've got plenty to move this and get this moving. Now remember, anything with already, if you move it, you're uh, cutting down on your action points. And when you do that, he's not going to be able to fire as much uh, or maybe not at all, right? Okay, so let's get this infantry kind of out in front. We want to move it past the artillery, although we could potentially stack them all together. Let's go here and let's do our river crossing. All right, so we're going to go across the bridge here on this road. So we're going to move them as a group. So I hit down here in the group, and we're going to move them across the river. And we did take some fire. Okay, so intercept fire finished. We took some intercept fire. What were we hit with? 105, 105 millimeter howitzer. Okay, six of those. All right. Um, Zero at the front, uh, killed in action, retreat alive. What is this retreat alive? It just means that they're they're not no longer firing. All six of them survived. What did we get? Well, we actually took a hit here. 75 millimeter pack uh, and the 37 millimeter flak. We had seven of each. Uh, we also had you know seven trucks and we had 30 uh, of this Nachtruppen. Um, and so. The uh, engineers moved first. We got hit here. We lost, missing an action here, or killed an action. We lost four 75 millimeters and three 37 millimeter flax. Boo. Uh, we didn't lose any troops or any trucks. The other thing you want to look at on the combat resolutions here, attacker, that's the Americans here, their readiness, experience, morale, and entrenchment. These all get affected by combat right so his readiness went down to 98 why is that well he shot at us so he lost some ammunition his experience went up by one for us our readiness went down by 16 to 83 our experience did not go up at all because we just got shot at our morale went down a little bit because we lost some men and of course our entrenchment went down because we moved okay so we move those two forward let's also move the infantry forward here and we also get hit here. Okay, we're well, we're crossing a river, it happens. We started off with four 81 millimeter mortars, four Panzer Shreks, all of those were fine, four still alive. We had these uh, kind of better Volks Grenadiers. Uh, we started with 130, uh, we lost 10. So 120 survived, we lose 10 men, and then the kind of the grunts of the force, we lost 20 of those. So we started with 320, we're down to 300, okay? So now, well, we're moving across the river. Let's move this guy down into town. Let's move this guy all the way down into town. All right, and then we're coming across. Now I'm gonna leave these guys for a second, okay? And I'm going to move over here because this guy, I want to get moving. Oh, one thing I did want to point out is, let's just say I leave the cursor here. If you look down at the black bar there, it says group movement mode, right click to do a ranged attack, move AP cost 77. It would cost us 77 of our AP to move into this hex. If we just move on the road one hex, it costs us 17. If we move here, it would cost 77. If we move here, 77. If we move here, actually, let's make sure we get over to group mode. If we move here, 91, 94. So it'll tell you exactly how much AP it would cost to move into each different hex. Well, I want to go down this dirt road, but we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. It's actually, I think, going to be cheaper to go this way. It's showing us the best route. Let's go right there. Okay, well, we're across the river. We jumped uh, from this town across the river, went down the road, and we're right here. I'm going to push down this dirt road, or that's what I hope to do. We've also got an arty unit. I kind of want to leave that static for a moment. Just in case we uncover anything else here, we can hit it with arty. Uh, we also have infantry 
here and I want to click on that and we want to get this also moving down this road I'd like to get to this hex if we can that would take 96 but it's showing us the best path so let's just cross the river first okay that all looks good now then we want to go here it's showing us the fastest ways to go across the plains and to here so let's just go ahead and do that and now we've moved down the road here all right artillery we have not uncovered anything here now we want these guys to keep moving up this road so let's go ahead and do that um, I want them to all move as a stack or as a group again uh, group move does he have yeah he's got movement points left unit okay all right so we're on this let's oh i gotta get let's do move looks like it's gonna make us move one at a time because they're mismatched units i believe uh let's go down the road here let's have our infantry lead the way is that true no nah. Let's have our engineers lead the way. Uh, we've given them those extra recon points. Now, we did lose some guns last time doing this, but let's keep moving them down the road. Okay, we take indirect fire again. Now, this time we lost 50 pioneers, so we really got hit hard. Killed in action. Uh, one Panzer Shrek got taken out. We started with six, down to one. We lost 50 here. Uh, we lost one of our half tracks, okay, down to five. Okay, uh, let's now move the infantry up with this infantry. Let's also move the anti nah, the anti tank can't move. You can see it's only got one. Now the infantry is down to one. The recon still has two, or the pioneers still have two because we gave it that bonus. So let's move that forward. Okay, we take no indirect fire there, and now let's move one more forward here. And we take no fire there. All right. So we've expanded out down these roads a little bit. We've got our pioneers leading the way, uh, just, you know, kind of with recon. We've got this infantry. He can't move any far further. Anti-tank could move here. And I'm actually going to do that because we've got this mech unit here. And let's look at the anti-tank and see what kind of range it has. It has a range of two. So from here, next turn, it could fire on this, but I want to wait until we get some more infantry out here. And you can see, these guys can move quite a ways. This infantry can get all the way out here with the Pioneers. So this is part of the 1126th. I want to bring him here, but before I do that, I want to see how far these... Now, see, these guys can get a little ways, can't they? Um... You may say, why not cross here to attack here? I'm going to bring the 11th Panzer into this area. Uh, and so I'm going to use this to try to get around behind the Americans and push on our accord. Uh, yeah, he can get a good distance here. Um, now, they're going to have a range probably of at least of two. Let's bring him there to begin with. Okay, what's the stack? Let's look at the hex. It's only 57. So we're in good shape. We also have this arty here. I'm probably not going to move that just yet. Now this infantry can get rolling along here. Uh, yeah, let's put him right there. So now he doesn't have any more movement. But if we cycle here, this infantry does. It's got four. And we also know we can move the anti-tank. So why don't we take this infantry with four move him one more now we may take some fire here let's find out we could also do an artillery hit here we could also just move him out this artillery we could put him in march mode because we know we're not going to get any arty fire here or we could just move him here to town this would cost 68 to move him here or we could put him in this town i guess uh I want this arty to keep moving. Although we could move this down with these guys or put this into town. Let's make sure everybody's in command here. Yep, that all looks good. 
this artillery is part of the hundred or the eleven twenty fifth. I think I want to keep these guys together. Let's get him out on the road or across the road. Now this time I am going to put him in march mode. So I'm going to click over here. It's going to cost us 25, but I want to get this guy into place. So I'm going to say yes, and now you can see he can go an extra hex if we needed it. But I'm going to place him right with this infantry, I think. Or do I leave him one behind? I think I'm going to leave him one behind. Okay, so he's over here. He's in march mode. He's in march mode, and you can see that that's in white there. All right, this unit, then, this artillery unit, um, I am going to go ahead. I'm going to also put this in march mode so that the horses get engaged, and I'm going to bring him down the road here to town. Uh, yeah, okay. Now, if we look at the hex, what's the stack? It's only 80. Uh, we're not in any danger of overstacking there. Then you can take them off the horse if you want to. Uh, yes. Now it says, remember, it will cost 25 AP to switch back to march mode, but you don't pay anything to take them out of march mode. So you almost always want to do that at the end here. You want to take them out of march mode so that if they get fired upon, they don't take extra damage. Now we've got the question of this artillery. Uh, he can't move. Is anything in range? One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Uh, no. Uh, well, yes, this would be in range, and so would this, but it's got no AP to do anything with it, all right? Okay, back to this unit. Let's move the infantry up one. Okay, we take no fire there, and let's put the anti-tank with him. So if this mech unit comes here, we've got some Panzer Shreks. Now, only two, unfortunately. Now, you can also see he's still got three... Uh, movement points or 30 action points, right? We do have a mortar here. So let's fire on this unit, all right, with the mortar, because we're not going to move anymore. So we may as well hit this guy with mortar. Um, attacking force, as you can see here, the odds are one to three. They may fire mortar back. Uh, do, 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 do. We're going to cancel that. We're not going to do that. Um, if we look at this with our mortar and we bring this up, it's got a range of two. So, I mean, we could hit him and you see the bolt. You always will see uh, this scope here when you can hit something with the unit you're on. Okay, let's get off that. I think we've just about moved as much of the 559th as we want to. Uh, you know, I don't know if I did the right thing with the pioneers out in front. Maybe it should have been an infantry unit, but that's how you learn the game. Let's make sure we can't move any further here. We could move up towards this mech unit, but I don't really want to do that. This can't move any further. This infantry can, though. So I guess I do want to. Let's get across the river if we can. Why wait? Actually, I may put him right here, just in case the mech unit does come this way. Oh, that's the arty, though, isn't it? That's the infantry. Make sure you're clicking on the right thing. We've got two of these. So let's put one here let's look at the eight how far can he get out he can get a ways out here let's put the eight here oh we took some indirect fire and that's what that you know that's what happens i love this as part of the game though it adds a whole different experience to recon right 75 millimeter here seven initial seven at the front seven still alive we lost four horse teams okay uh, we lost one 120 millimeter mortar. Well, okay. Uh, and as you can see, when you take that fire, it stopped us here. We were trying to get to this hex, but because we took that fire and had to take cover, we've now got zero uh, movement points. Well, yeah, we got zero because this one still already had one. So we've got zero, and now we want to take the other infantry here, there, and I'm going to stack here. Again, just in case this mech wants to come down the road, that's going to be a hell of a battle. And doing that, we did lose 10 troops because we took some, again, more indirect fire. Oh, we actually took it here. So he didn't even get out here. Yep, I like it. I like it. It makes the game far more interesting. Now then, we've got this artillery that could also fire here. 
uh, if we look, it's the 120 millimeter mortar. It's got a range of five. And so these guys, you always kind of want to lead back a little bit, right? Let's look and see what happens here. No return fire expected. Okay. What do we have? Readiness modifier. Well, he's moved, uh, you know, he's moved almost 60 action points. So this is negative 36 plus 30 on the experience. Uh, we get an indirect fire bonus because now we've got enough units close to this that we've got a much better idea of what it is, how it's sitting, etc. Uh, we get a staff bonus of 60 or a command bonus of 61%. Uh, the cumulative modifier is plus 50%, so that's pretty good. Offensive firepower 104. Take that times 50%. We end up with 156, and I'm just going to hit attack with this mortar, all right? If we're firing at both, we could also bring in that infantry regiment that has mortar. Again, no return fire expected. We may as well fire this since we have movement points left. Let's hit attack, and you see it hits him there. And let's go through this a little bit. So our attacking totals, we had the 75 millimeters, 8. We had 81 millimeters, two of those. We end up losing two of those, okay? 120 millimeters, we had seven. They're, they were fine. He started out uh, with the 60 millimeter mortar, 81 millimeter mortar, so we did get some fire back. The, you know, they just gave us imperfect information. He lost one mortar. Uh, he lost two bazookas. He lost three U.S. trucks, and he did lose one M375. Okay, well, that I mean, that all plays out excellently for us uh, because he did lose one of those M3s. Uh, he does have M3 half tracks here. He's got some GI veterans, some GI greens. All right. But now we're all set up here. We've used all of our points. We have, if we go to the stats, we have lost some guys, certainly. Let's look at casualties sustained. We've sustained 85 casualties. Casualties inflicted, we've only inflicted 15. Well, okay. Uh, but we're on the offensive. Now then, we can't move that artillery. Let's go to the, the 11th Panzer Division. All right. Oh, before I go away, though, let's make sure everybody's in within our green command. They are. I like that. OK, let's go up here. Let's look at this first motorized regiment. Um, it's on half tracks. You see it's got 20 of the half tracks. This is the SDKV or KFZ, the 251. I just call this the 251. Uh, you know, it's got uh, got some guns here. It's got some flak ability. Uh, you can see that this unit, if we go to preferences, and we go to our units and we do the silhouette, they move by these half tracks. And you can see that right here. If you also click on unit, you can go to unit details. Unit wait, where does it tell us that? It tells us, oh, it tells us down here on the black bar. So if I go like this, movement mode, no, it doesn't tell us that. I guess it tells us right here. I mean, that's that's where you would find out when you're on this unit. Unit is currently in combat mode. Okay, we don't want to be in march mode. We're too close to the enemy here. Um, the unit normally moves as tracked. Excellent. Click to switch to march mode, 25 AP. Okay. Uh, this unit, these guys, we're going to bring around here. So we're going to go to town here first. Uh, we don't want to put it on move mode. We could also, you can see, it's got some ranged weapons. It's got the mortars here. You can see the mortars. It's got Panzerstreck. It's also got a 50 millimeter pack. Its range is one. The mortars, we've got a range of five on those mortars. That's pretty good. Uh, and we've got a range of two on the short range, uh, 81 millimeter which one was this? This was the 120 millimeter. It's got a range of five. Okay, uh, so we're going to move down into town here and go try to take this road. So we'll move into town. We took no resistance there. Now we could play a command card with one of these units. So let's go look at our officer. Uh, it's Wiedersheim. Tank drive, we can't do that. Speed. Extra action points for a selected unit. Okay, is there a unit we want to get out here faster? Maybe. Uh, cancel. 
what's tank drive? Now we can't do this this time, but once we get this added, we could do it next time. Offensive bonus for selected units tank troops. Okay, that seems very uh, useful. <laughs> Certainly. What's attack? Uh, offensive bonus for a selected unit. Okay, well, that's just the generic one. This is for motorized units. Um, okay, well, I think we want to cross the river, but before we do that, I think we want to move our headquarters down here. So we're going to move Wiedersheim down here so that he's in command if he takes any fire. Uh, how aggressive do I want to get about this? Well, let's move here first. Let's look at the hex. What's the stack there now? 189. So we're getting close to being overstacked there. Uh, make sure you're still on that command and move. Let's move him there. Okay. We didn't take any loss there. Now you see the, uh, scope come up and you may say, whoa, why the hell is that? Well, I mean, even in the commands, you've got some ranged units here. So like the 80 millimeter flak, it's got a range of three. So he can fire this 80 mil, 88 millimeter. Now this is the best gun really the Germans have, right? Uh, it started off as an AA gun. It ends up being their best tank killer on the Eastern front. So these 80 millimeters are great to have. All right. So now he's sitting here. This guy is in range and he can certainly continue to move uh we've got that what else do we have here we've got the panzer grenader regiment there we've got tank infantry artillery okay i think it's time to hit this unit with some artillery uh not this unit this unit because we're about to move down this road he's up on a hill so we will take a penalty for the elevation change just something to keep in mind we see now we have a look at this we've got some tanks here right uh, it's actually telling us exactly what they've got 19 m4s 18 m5s 14 m4s we probably don't want to tangle with that directly now we do have the tigers coming right but we don't want to really lose that many of them when what we could do is just go around him and force him to start to retreat so let's click on this hex which is kind of blocking our way down these two roads let's click on that all right let's go to the hex here and do range. And what do we have that could possibly hit this? Well, I see some artillery here, all right? So let's take this artillery um, and look at what we've got. So we've got a penalty for the landscape, uh, okay, negative 40%, negative four for the, re for the uh, readiness. We've got 21% plus for experience. Indirect fire bonus, we've got a plus three, okay? We are getting the command bonus. Uh, and if we go look at the command, that is his total command bonus. Uh, overall, we get plus 24% when you put all of this through the algorithm. Our raw attack value is 176. It comes out to 219. But let's fire some artillery at this guy and see what happens. Okay, we get no return fire. So we fired 1,305 millimeters, 522s, and 552s. We lose nothing. We took no fire there. We destroyed one M3 half track, one M8 Greyhound, four M375s. Excellent. Uh, and two Jeeps. All right. So that artillery was really nice. And if you look at, you know, the, I, I really like this when it shows you before and after the battle, our readiness goes down because we did use ammunition and our guys maybe got a little tired firing the guns experience. We went up to. All right. Look over here at the Americans, though. A hundred. Their readiness went down to 82. They didn't gain any experience. They didn't lose any morale, but they did lose an entrenchment level or, you know, a, a nine points of entrenchment. OK, so that was a nice little artillery barrage there. We could also uh, have used the 88 guns potentially, but I don't think we can see them. See, so we talked about how the headquarters uh, has the 88 guns, so they have a range of five. You can see we could hit this, or we could fire at this. Let's put it that way. Um, but we can't fire at this because we have no line of sight, and we don't even have an indirect line of sight on him. Because you can see here, we don't have direct line of sight, but we have indirect line of sight. So that's what that's telling you there. 
Okay, uh, what about this artillery? What's the deal here? Why can't he fire over here? Well, he doesn't have line of sight on this. Okay, uh, good to know. What do we have here? The 75 millimeter packs, okay. Uh, we've also got the main command that's sitting back here. We probably want to move him up to get certain things into command range. We'll probably want to uh, move that with the anti-air and keep the anti-air with them. We still have some panzers to move here. Uh, we've also got, what is this? This is the flak. Oh, this is flak as well. Well, let's go back to NATO counters. That's why I do, do that. Uh, so I know what I'm dealing with. Yep, anti-air, anti-air. Uh, we'll probably want to keep this anti-air with this headquarters, this anti-air with that. You can see we've got artillery in here in this panzer group, but we've got this other mobile group. Why don't we get him moving out and around here as well? So we'll take him down here, uh, and I'm going to wait to cross the river. So down here he goes. All right, what's our stack here? We'll look in the hex, click on that hex. Total stack 112, okay, so we're fine. We see the artillery here that we already used. We've got zero action points left there, so he's just going to be there. We've got uh, engineers here that we could you know, bring out this way. But we're going to do all of that next time. But we're now moving on the map. So next episode, we'll move the rest of the 11th Panzer. We'll move uh, our Panzer battalions down here, maybe or maybe not. But at the very least, we may fire... Uh, any ranged weapons that they have and it try to soften up the Americans. You can also see we're starting to see more units on the map as we move out on the map. And it's a very complicated algorithm that I'm not going to go into. But basically, as you uncover more hexes, you get more line of sight on hexes all surrounding it. And you get uh, more and more uh, intelligence. Now, uh, you know, we see these are question marks, but at least we know something's there. All right, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'm having a hell of a lot of fun doing this. Uh, hopefully you're learning something and enjoying it as well. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.